on this channel, I've, I've made so many videos, I've made about 40 videos, and they speak out of mainly the lessons that I've learned over the last six years during chronic illness, during the breakdown of a relationship, um, during a lot of struggles. I've spoken about it so many times before where I've been housebound, bedbound, unable to work for four years, uh, just struggling day to day with energy to get by and even do the basic things. Uh, by the grace of God, I've seen improvement over time. Um, but this particular week has been a very challenging one for me. Um, I found out about a week ago that uh, the girl that I was with, my former fiance, had actually moved on with someone else. I'd, uh, I'd been in touch with her recently, uh, a bit loosely, and I'd always held hope two years on that God was going to do something there. Um, just before she'd left the relationship, she actually told me that she had a dream. And I'm very skeptical with dreams usually. Um, but I listened to it and I questioned her on it and it was just so compelling. She said that before she'd met me, about a year before she'd met me, she'd actually had this dream that was so real that she had to go and tell people about it, go, or was go and tell a friend about it. She, it was like she was awake. It was nothing like she's ever had before. And uh, she affirms that to this day. Um, in the dream, she was in a hospital and there was someone on a bed that was oppressed. Um, they were severely oppressed, um, emotionally, spiritually. And she started praying for that person. And uh, after a while, she gave up. And then God felt to, um, God told her that to, to keep believing and to keep, to keep hoping for that restoration. And she, she started praying again. And this person was raised up to health. Um, he ended up doing this great ministry work for God and she fell in love with him and they ended up together. And she told me the night that she told me that, prayer, that dream, she said to me, Matt, the first time I saw you and I looked into your eyes, that person in the dream, that we, that was, that's you. I, I saw when I, the dream came back to me instantly as soon as I saw you and I just said to her, yeah, like, like maybe they look like mine a bit. She goes, no, no, I'm an artist. I, I know detail, Matt, that was you in the dream. And I knew straight away that you were gonna be a part of my life. And then as we got to know each other, we'd got into a relationship. Um, uh, we, we got together while I was sick, but then I got worse and worse and worse. I went so far downhill, uh, it was horrific. Uh, she had chronic insomnia for two years because she couldn't cope with my illness and I could hardly leave the house. Um, and my mind, I just lost, I felt like I was losing my mind. Um, and these things sort of unfolded. And then it got too much for her after, after three years together and, uh, and she, she left and it broke my heart. It absolutely broke my heart because uh, I couldn't be the person that I wanted to be. And uh, to not be able to fight for the person you love, to not be able to, to just see things falling away from your life because you're ill is so hard to take. It's so hard to take. And I'd always believed that when she told me just how true that dream was and when she told me how real it was and that she identified me immediately. And then when I got sick and I got to that place of oppression where I was stuck in bed and I just thought to myself, you know, well, God's spoken to her um, in that way and it's pretty amazing. And I thought maybe she needs that because, uh, you know, um, the extent of the trauma so much that nothing could convince her otherwise. And even recently I'd, I'd spoken to her and uh, I'd, 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 she said that Matt, even when we've caught up recently or we chatted on the phone, I've gone nights without sleep again. Just from chatting, the trauma was so strong in her of what had happened and I just thought to myself, not even the voice of God could. <laughs> Could penetrate that and so hearing that news this week uh, was really hard for me to take to be honest really challenging um, yeah hard hard week um, on top of that as well it's coincided with a physical low in my illness um, after just returning to study in the last uh, few months, 
my body has just laboured a bit the last couple of weeks. It's just really just hit a low. Um, it can recover a lot quicker than it has before, but it's just it's just hit a low, and um, I've just need a lot more time to rest and processing with that emotional side of things while I've been ill and unable to do a whole lot. Um, unable to just go for big walks and take my mind off things or, or, or work even on the channel and stuff like that it's been really tough and unless you've experienced a chronic illness you just don't know you just you, you don't know the the absolute hell of chronic illness of being physically restricted of having uh, your body chemistry and your mind chemistry playing with you and by the grace of God um, by his grace, you know, I just thank him that he has put me in a place where I've experienced his peace and his joy and he's built such a resilience in me um, and I'm, I'm just so blessed and the teachings of this channel come out of that, they do um, and in the midst of the illness to, to, to be in that relationship with him where I'm at, I, I can't believe it. Um, but like I said, this week has been the hardest week for a long, long time for me on both of those fronts. And you get up every day and you, you're just you're needing to rest your body. You're needing to continually believe to, to get better and better and take one step forward at a time. And there's no escape from it. You have to face it head on. So it's been a very challenging time, um, as you could imagine. So when I speak, you know, I, I, I want people to know that I'm not speaking from this position up here where everything's going well in my life. I want to let people know that I'm not speaking a theory that I'm getting out of the Bible or out of a book or a sermon. The, the, the truths that I teach about suffering, the truths that I teach, teach about difficulty and about being transformed in Christ are truths which I'm living out in my life, are truths which... I am laying hold of and keeping before me at all times. So it's, it's just very real. And this week, the last few days, what I've done is I haven't been able to walk too far, but I've gone up to the hills. I live near the hills and uh, I've walked up through the hills and the fields in the dark at night for about an hour or so. And I've just absolutely bawled my eyes out to God. I've just absolutely cried and cried and cried and just said, God, what is happening? Why am I in this position in my life? What, why, why have I had to experience the loss of so much? And I've cried and cried and called out to him and just got to a point where I've just said, God, what? What do you want from me? What, what, what do you want from me right now? What do you want to show me? What do you want to teach me? What are you trying to do in me? Um, because whatever it is, I need it. I need it. I won't accept anything else. I can't handle not, not surrendering completely to you and experiencing you. I, I just need you so much. And I feel that this is going to be such a time of strengthening and I feel that this is going to be something that I'm going to look back on and say that, that there was another level of, of growth, of intimacy with God and, and transformation. That's what I'm believing. You see, the, 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 these are the times where the truths of his word become very real. This is when um, you, you, you're experiencing the hardships of life, you're experiencing such overwhelming challenges but you're laying hold of those truths and they're no longer just theory they're things which which you you need in your life and when you cry out to god he's going to meet you there he's going to give you the grace he's going to give you the strength he's going to give you the revelation but one thing i'm learning more and more that i've learned many times is that he's never going to lead you more than one step at a time and you have to take each step in faith. You don't know what's before you, but God knows what's before you. And there are, there are two responses you could have when you are going through such a time of overwhelm. And you can either one, 
uh, cry in a heap and collapse and, and give up and wait for it to pass. But that's, that's not what God wants us to do. The other one is you could just have this suck it up attitude and just try to keep pushing through in your own strength and you're just going to hit a wall and you're just going to have to have to deal with what's going on at some point. The response is like the Psalms you see with David, you bring it before him and you say, God, I, I'm struggling, Father. I admit that I'm not who I say I am. I admit that I'm just a man. I, I admit that this is too much for me. But I know that you hold me and I know that this is not too much for you, God. And just do do what you need to do. I can't even see it. I don't even know how. I don't even care how. Just, just make something of this, God. Get me where you want me to be. If you're getting my attention right now, get me where you want me to be, Lord, and use this for good. And that's my prayer right now, Lord. Make me more obedient. Make me more receptive to your voice. Reveal more of who you are to me, Father, in this time. As my Father, my comforter, my strength. And, uh, and out of that, out of that, God can do something real inside of us and ultimately make us more like Jesus. And through that, we're going to be a blessing to others. You know, no matter what you're going through, no matter what life throws at you in your circumstances, the purposes of God don't stop. We're simply called to fear God and keep his commandments. And I just want to encourage you in that. Because whether you've had a chronic illness, you're going through it like I have, where I've been bed bound and I couldn't do anything, or whether you've got full energy and things are going great for you, the, 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 the will of God is always to, to obey him and to keep his commandments. And I just want to put that before you. It's also to, to know him personally. We're created specifically for specifically for relationship with him and it's to become like Jesus and during times like this week that I've gone through it just strips away anything superficial and just brings you to your core I got no idea what's ahead for me I don't know and uh, I'm not used to feeling this way but while I am going through this I'm going to make sure that I lay hold of, of what God wants to teach me and uh, It'll be interesting to reflect back on this and just to see what comes out of it. We can always look to him. God is enough. He has the answers and he wants us to come before him. I know we don't feel like doing it, but the one thing I've found is when we least feel like coming before God, the one thing we have to do is come before God because then it will be none of us and all of him. If anything happens, it's all of him. So I want to say, friends, that reiterate again that uh, I'll go into more detail in other videos about my story exactly, but I am speaking from a place where I've experienced immense suffering um, over the years. And uh, I just want to say that I understand. I understand pain. If you're going through something, I, I may not understand your specific circumstance, but I can certainly relate to suffering. But in that, God's given me a great hope. And the peace and the joy that live in me day to day is so great. And if God wants to allow these circumstances this week to shake me up and to take me deeper, then praise him because it's for a good purpose. I've done a few videos recently which, uh, which might be a blessing for people. One was just last week uh, about the discipline of God. Um, if you're feeling like you'd like a, a video on that, another one is um, your suffering is not meaningless. And I talk a little bit about my story in that one too. And another one, if you're going through a difficult time, is the God of all comfort. So those are three. I'll link them in the description below. Um, I just wanted to specifically speak this because I wanted to open up about myself. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are going through suffering. I see it in the comments and I just see it in life. And I don't want to ignore it or gloss over it. So thank you, friends, for sitting here and listening to me um, today. I pray that you're blessed by this message. And uh, you all take care. 
And no matter where you're at, keep looking to him.